Nous sommes en audience publique, Monsieur le Président. Court officer, we're in open session, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Witness, before the break, you were telling us about when you were repairing your fence in your garden and somebody spoke to you. Do you remember that? Do you remember telling us that? I do. Uh, the person that... Yes. The person that spoke to you, uh, do you see their name on the list in front of you? Deal. Answer yes. Could you tell us which number that person appears at? Number Yapili. Answer it's number two. And could you tell us exactly what this person at number two, what he said to you? Um, one second. I want to go into private session for that answer. Officer, we're in public session, Your Honor. Uh, and, Mr. Witness, do you know what ethnicity this person, too, is? Answer. He's a Kalenjin. And did you take these words seriously? Answer. No, I didn't take it seriously. Did you stay in location one?
Ndiyo nilibaki hapo hapo. Answer, yes. I stayed there. You've been telling us about the first day after the election. Is that correct? Answer. I don't remember. Mr. Moffat, are you saying that the conversation happened the first day after the election? Yes, Rona, but I'll, I'll rephrase the question. The conversation that you had with person number two this took place the first day after the election. Is that correct? Answer, yes. It was after the election. The second day after the election, did you find out what the results were? Um, hold off on the question. We need to establish what the witness is saying in terms of the possibility of precision of when the conversation happened because the answer he gave does, does not crystallize that impression that it was on the first day after the election. Indeed, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Witness, just asking you again, the conversation that you had with person number two how many days after the election did this take place? Answer. It was right before the election results were published. Do you remember how many days after the date that you voted? Answer. It was two days after we had voted. When did the election votes start to be known in location one, the election results rather, when did the election results start to become known in location one?
ilikuwa siku ya pili answer it was the second day after the elections and did you get to know which of the candidates were in the lead um we here are talking about election results uh, can you be precise as to which post we're talking about because i understand it was a multiple post election so to speak I'll phrase the question differently. Do you know who the presidential candidates were uh, in the elections in 2007? Ingependa Answer. I would like for you to repeat that question, please. Right. At this stage, let me do this. Um, hold that question, Council. Um, witness, do you still wish to proceed? with the interpretation or would you rather speak or rather would you rather take the questions in English tokana na tafsiri ningependa niulizwe maswali kwa Kiingereza tafsiri imekuwa ngumu Answer, it would be better if uh, the question is put to me in English because I have trouble understanding the interpretation. As we've heard before that there are different dialects to Swahili, in, that may be the problem. Um, we don't know, but Mr. Moffat, uh, it looks like we have to switch to English while well, you are already speaking English. Uh, the witness will have to listen to the your questions in English and so would you also prefer to answer in English or Swahili your own answer status Answer. I would like to respond in English. All right, we will proceed in that way. Um, but something we need to watch out for, please, and I know I did not mention it when I was advising you initially when you came. Um, try not to overlap with the person asking you questions. By overlap, I mean you need to observe a pause between him completing his question and then you beginning to answer. Uh, we call it the five-second rule, but anywhere from three to five seconds should do as long as you obso observe a pause. So do not start answering immediately. Just observe a little pause and then begin your answer in English.
Yona, I wonder whether the witness is able to hear, because she's got his earphones and it may be... Yes, we need to switch channels for him. To the floor channel, I believe. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent. Okay. But please observe the pause. That's what I was saying. Just the exchange we had now demonstrates what I'm talking about. When I said, can you hear me now? You immediately said, yes, you could hear me. Uh, we would like a small pause. Um, five seconds would, would be a good, a good pause to observe but anywhere from three seconds to five seconds should do. But just don't start answering immediately upon completion of the question. A little pause, and then you answer. All right? Yes. That's good. And, Mr. Witness, my earlier question was, do you know who the presidential candidates were for the elections in 2007? I can recall two, but I can't remember the other. Do you know the names of the two you recall? Could you mention them? There was Mr. Honorable Mike Bucky and Honorable Raila Morodinga. And the second day after the elections. Mr. President, I think there is a problem with the trans uh, page 60, 61, line 3. The name of one of the candidates, I think, is wrong. I believe it's being corrected at line four, but um, I think I think it's it's obvious it was Mwai Kibaki, and it's corrected at line four. Yes, see that. Mr. Witness, by the second day of the elections, were there any indications of who of these candidates was leading in the elections? Yes, first was Mr. Mike Barkey, who was leading. Then, secondly, Mr. Ayla was leading. And by the third day, was this the same, or was there a different ranking in who was leading? Yes, there was a difference. By that time, Mr. Kbaki was the one leading.
and in location one, what was the reaction of the ODM supporters and the Kalenjin to this trend of, uh, of election feedback? Can you rephrase? What was the reaction of the ODM supporters and the Kalenjin in location one when they heard this news? They refused the results and they were very angry. How did they react when they were angry? They said that it couldn't be like that because Mr. Ayla was the one who was leading. They started shouting, running and saying they, they, they can't accept their results. And did you see this yourself? Yes, I saw. Do you, I would like to ask you now about the announcement of the final presidential election results. Do you understand that? Pardon your question. Why don't you ask a question right away, Council? Do you remember the day that the presidential election results were announced? Yes, it was around 6 p.m. And did you hear that announcement yourself? Yes, I heard the results on radio. You said it was 6 p.m. Do you remember what date it was? I'm not sure of the date. But did you hear who was announced as the winner, the presidential candidate winner? Yes, Mr. Mike Baki. And again, what was the reaction of the ODM supporters and the Kalenjin in location one when this result was announced? They said the results were not correct, and they start shouting, running from position two, location two, towards location one, shouting and saying the results cannot be that. That difference is big. And... 
where were you when this shouting and running was taking place? I was in position, in location one. And how could you tell that these persons were ODM supporters and Kalenjin? To the results, they said that, that uh, the result cannot be that. And the, uh, well, the people we, we knew. When you say these were the people we knew, were you able to recognize some of these people? Yes, I do. When you witnessed this shouting and running, by the Kalenjin, what did you do? At that moment, when they were coming from position uh, location two towards to, uh, location one, shouting, disagreeing with the results, they went up. That's the, the place they started burning houses. At that time is when we went there to, to help the Kikuyu members who were there. Okay, firstly, do you know the number of these Kalenjin that you say went up and started burning houses? Your Honours, if I may just clarify, my learned friend has been asking the witness questions in relation to ODM supporters and Kalenjin. And all of a sudden now we are just focusing only on Kalenjin. So if perhaps you can have more clarity on whether this is one and the same group or ODM supporters includes other tribes. Just some more clarity. I'll clarify it with, with witnesses. This group that you saw running and shouting, were they only ODM supporters or only Kalenjin or were they Kalenjin ODM supporters? These were Kalenjin ODM supporters. Do we mean Kalenjins who were ODM supporters? Yes, my honor. And how could you tell that they were Kalenjin? It's what the people, we used to live with them. We knew them very well. Then my earlier question was, can you estimate a number 
of this group that you said went up and started burning houses? There were about 30 to 40. And can you describe what this group looked like? What were they wearing, for instance? That day they had only ordinary clothes. Do you know if they were carrying anything? When they started burning houses, they had bows and arrows. And you know, just for the transcript, I think line 21, I believe what I heard anyway was that day they had only ordinary clothes. That's correct. Now, you've told us that you recognized some of this group. They were your neighbors. Just answer yes or no, please. Do you know the names of any of those that you recognized? Yes. Now, please take a look at the list in front of you. Do the names of any of these persons appear on that list? Yes, please. Could you tell us which numbers they appear at, or number? Number two and number three. And were any of number two or number three your neighbors? Yes, both were my neighbors. And Although it may be obvious, but do you know the ethnicity of number three? I believe you've given us the ethnicity of number two already. Yes, he's a Kalenjin. It's almost like they might as well round up the thing number two as well. It's and is it correct that number two is also a Kalenjin? Yes, Your Honor.
Now, you said earlier that some of the Kikuyu went to help. Firstly, about how many Kikuyu went to help when this was going on. Yes, there were about 100. And where were you at this time when the group went to help? Yes, I was among them. So, please tell us what you and this, and the remainder of this group, what did you do to help the situation? When we were there, we tried to warn them not to burn the houses because we knew them. We were calling them by names. And we were trying to help the Kikuyu women and children going down. When you tried to warn them not to burn the houses, did they listen to you? No, they didn't. You've told us that the 30 or 40 Kalenjin they had bows and arrows. Did your group of a hundred or so, did you have any weapons? No, he didn't. And did you manage to help the women and children that you had gone to help? Yes, a family of five slept at my house th th that night. Do you know how this family of five got to your house? Yes, because we were the one who were helping them to move from the where the house the houses were being burned. And just to clarify, you said a family of five. Is this one family with five members of the family? Or is it something different? This is, was a family, a mother and his children, five families. Are you saying there were five different families comprising of 
mother and children. Yes, Your Honor. You mean mothers and children? Indeed, mothers and children, Your Honor. Is that what you were saying, witness? There were several mothers, five mothers at least, in the family, in the group that were at your house. Yes, Your Honor. And do you know what happened to the houses of these five families? Yes. Please tell us. The houses were burnt. Completely. And do you know the ethnicity of these five families that spent the night at your house? Yes, all Wakikuyus. And do you know how many houses were burnt in location one on that particular day? Yes, there were about 20 houses. Do you know the ethnicity of those who owned those 20 houses? Yes, Wakikuyus. Mr. President, can we go into private session for just one minute? I have one or two questions. Private session. The Samsung Adjust people. Court officer, we're now in public session, Your Honour. Thank you. You've you've told us that there were houses being burnt. Do you know how these houses were set alight? Yes. At that moment, the college boys were running. They were throwing something, an object. That we could not see because it was dark. They were throwing on the house and then the house get in a frame. Now, I would like to ask you about the following day. You said these five families spent the night at your house. Did you also spend the night at your house? Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell us what happened the following day. The 
the following day at lunch time, the Canadian boys went on top of the hill singing song. The, the time they were singing song, the, the number of the the, the Kalenji boys was increasing, uh, the, the Kalenji was increasing. The more they sing, the more the number is increasing. You, you say Kalenji boys. Firstly, can you help us, what do you mean by boys? Were they young boys or were they grown men? For that, the 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 the, the, the Kalenjins, men and boys, were the one who were increasing. And you said they were increasing. Do you know? Uh, can you give an estimate of what number there were? on this hill. You could not say uh, the exact number, but the numbers were increasing in thousands. And then you've said that they were singing. Uh, do you know what they were singing. The song they were singing, they usually sing the song during the circumcision. And how do you know this? Have you heard the song before yourself? Yes, yes. They used they used to practice the the exercise just near uh, uh, area one. Now we used to know because you could see them singing, having their ceremony. You could hear the song. And just to clarify. Do you speak or understand Kalenjin yourself? Yes, I can distinguish Kalenjin from other tribes, but I don't, I, I don't know their language. I don't know how to speak the language. You don't know how to speak it, but do you understand it either? Yes, I can say this is a Kalenjin language. I'm just going to press you a bit further. If somebody says something to you in Kalenjin, will you understand what that person is saying? No, you are not. You've talked about the Kalenjin circumcision. Uh, do you know when this circumcision ceremony normally takes place? Yes, during the, 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 the December season. And you've also told us how there was singing 
on this particular day and the numbers were increasing. Do you know if these challenging boys and men were coming from within location one or from other places? They were coming from other places. How do you know that? Most of them who live there, we know them, but those who were coming were new to us. So this group of thousand or so challenging, what did they do once they were on that hill? At that time, when they were singing, they were coming down the hill, burning houses, going up, coming down like ants, burning houses and going back. Mr. Mofade, just so you watch it, uh, the number. I'm not sure the witness said the group was thousand or so. So if you want to make anything of the number, you, you need to clarify it. Indeed, John. Mr. Witness, remember I asked you earlier if you could estimate the number of challenging boys and men that grouped on this hill. What is your estimate of the number? They were in thousands. Around 1,000 and above. But I'm not sure of. Mr. President, I, it's just a clarification for the transcript at line 2 of the current page, page 76. I believe the, the, the witness said during the December season. Is there any dispute there? Okay. Mr. Khan says no dispute. And did you say, Mr. Witness, that there were burning houses going up, coming down like ants, burning houses and going back up? Is that what you said? Yes, Your Honor. And where were you at this time, uh, you personally? I was down the hill where we could see them, where we were doing. The 
eyewitness said where I could see them what they were doing. Mr. President, that's what I heard as well. And you said you were down the hill. Do you mean at the bottom of the hill? Yes, Your Honor. And is this the same hill where the thousands of Kalenjin boys and men had converged? Yes, Your Honor. And were you alone at the bottom of the hill? Please don't give us names, but uh, how many people were with you? I can't tell the number, but we are more. Can you help? in terms of tens, hundreds, or thousands? We were in hundreds. Again, Ms. Romov had a pinpoint. Do you know how many hundreds you might have been. Was it hundred, over a hundred? I know it might be difficult to estimate, but please try. Can confirm your honor. Do you know the ethnicity of the group you were part of. Yes. What what ethnic group did your group belong to? Kikui. And please, can you describe your group? Was it men? Was it men, women, or children? Please, please help us. Yes, we were Kikuyu men. I want to go back to the group of thousand or more challenging men that were on top of the hill. Do you know if they were carrying any arms? Yes, they had bows and arrows. What, what time of the day was this event taking place? It was during lunch time. And you've already told us that you could 
see them from where you were? Could you identify any of the group that was up there? Please, please just answer yes or no. Yes, I could identify them. And please take a look at the list in front of you. Do you see the names of any of the persons you could identify on that list? Yes, Your Honor. Could you tell us the numbers of the persons you identified? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four and number five. So the first five on that list were amongst this group. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And from where you were at the foot, at the bottom of the hill, could you see if this group had any leader or leaders? Yes, Your Honor. And could you see who those leaders were? Yes, Your Honor. Were you able to recognize any of them? Yes, Your Honor. Again, uh, take a look at the list in front of you. Do you recognize any of the names on that list as being amongst the leaders of this group? Yes, Your Honor. Please tell us which one or which ones. Number one, number four, and number five. Mr. President, um, might we go into private session, probably for ten, five to ten minutes? Essentially until the end of the day. It might just take us there. Uh, I might be able to do it sooner.
right. We we good. Private session. <laughs>